Hey there, Seahawks fans. We have a special deal for you guys. For a limited time, you can get free Seahawks videos. All you guys have to do is hit that big red button and subscribe. It is free for at least the next 365 days, so don't delay. Subscribe today. Today's Seattle Seahawks video is a look at some potential surprise cut candidates. So every name you'll see on this list is someone I don't think does get cut. That's why it's a surprise. I'm not picking the third or fourth string corner. That doesn't appeal to anybody. Instead, I'm picking some more notable names who would be a surprise cut candidate. First up on my list is cornerback Trey Flowers and someone I've mentioned before. Flowers has starting experience. I think that carries value for Seattle, and you might be able to find a trade partner if you want to pursue that route. But he's also struggled as well. He hasn't played that much in terms of targets in the preseason, but has gotten beat a decent amount. I'll also make note, the trade for John Reed, assuming he makes the roster, the former fourth-round pick out of Penn State, the Seahawks traded for in a deal with the Houston Texans, that would be one spot going to him, right? That complicates the cornerback room. Now, there are some significant cap savings if he's released. Over $2 million, not an insignificant figure for a team that does have some big contracts to pay out this year and moving forward. I did not think Flowers was very good last year. I still think in reality he is at best the third outside corner on this team. There is a numbers game going on right now in the cornerback room. There, there are Five nickel or safety corners who are locks. Blair, Amadi, Adams, Diggs, and I think Ryan Neal as well. That would give you five, maybe six corners on this room. You throw in the John Reed trade that was just made official, by the way. That's one guy who I think makes a team. DJ Reed's making it. Akella Witherspoon is making it. Trey Brown is also going to make it. So in theory, that's four guys. That would leave Trey Flowers versus Demarius Randall for the last spot. Sorry, get Gavin Heslop. I don't think he ends up making it if they only carry five. So could Flowers be that surprise cut if they want to go with Randall over him? Randall's the more likely cut. That's what makes Flowers the surprise one. So I want you guys now to name a surprise roster cut for me in the comments section. A bigger name who you think ends up not making the team. Funnily enough, I almost put Luke Wilson on this list, and then he ended up retiring because life is just crazy, isn't it? So get the ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and let me know your surprise roster cut. Next up, running back Rashad Penny. And again, I think he makes the team, but I do want to bring this up as a long shot possibility. The former first rounder has simply not lived up to the hype. Now, Penny missed most of last season. He's not a starter for this team. And of your potential cut candidates at running back, we'll get to another one in a second because I know how you guys feel about him. You save more by cutting Penny, just under $1.4 Over his career, the flashes have been there. And I think in reality, Chris Carson is your number one back. That leaves Penny competing for a backup position. Now, maybe you can find a trade partner instead that would make a little bit more sense for Penny. But I do think a cut, although unlikely, is still a potential possibility for Seattle and their, frankly, disappointing first-round pick so far. So let's say you're the GM. What are you doing? K for keep, T for trade, C for cut, Rashad Penny. I myself lean toward keep, but I think there's a chance all of those three are still in their own possibility. So get your votes in for me in the comments section. Now, we've done cut candidates before on this channel, less so surprise ones, more, uh, more expected cut candidates. I meant, I've mentioned Alex Collins on that first video, and many of you in the comments were not happy that I put Alex Collins on there. Well, I'm doing it again, so I apologize in advance. Collins is in a battle for that, what I consider the last running back spot. I doubt Seattle carries everybody on the roster right now. There's no guaranteed money with Collins' contract, who you could probably stash on the practice squad, oh, by the way. And there's a limited third down impact. Collins was fine last year. A, 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 in terms of replacement level back, provided that for you. Decent enough average, only 18 carries in the regular season, two scores. As a runner, 
there is value. But it's the third down and special teams issues that kind of rear their head here for Alex Collins. You look at what this team has at the running back position. Chris Carson, something we all know, is making this team. There's no doubt about it that Chris Carson is making this team as the lead back. Rashad Penny, maybe it's a battle there, potentially. Nick Ballore, we'll get to him later on. DJ Dallas, I have been so impressed by him in the preseason. I think he has to make this team. Travis Homer offers you third down value as a pass protector, something Collins does not. So I think Dallas and Homer would make the list over Collins, who has had a grand total of one special team snap so far in the preseason. Collins' best case is your number three back, I think, behind some combination of Penny, Dallas, and Homer. But if your number three back does not help you on third downs nor on special teams, those guys don't often make it. I don't think Seattle rosters five backs with Homer back from injury. Because of that, somebody's got to go. So pick one to cut. Carson is your tried and true obvious starter. You got, I think you have to cut one of these guys or injury stash them somehow. So who is it? Type AC for Alex Collins. Type TH for Travis Homer. Type RP for Rashad Penny. Or type DD for DJ Dallas. A true surprise name, I think, would be Al Woods. Now, Seattle signed the veteran to a rather expensive, relatively speaking, contract this past off. Number three didn't play at all in 2020. Now, Woods is an aging veteran, but I still believe he can help you against the run. But he's closer to being a roster lock than, say, Robert Nikon Dietz. He would also save you more money, $1.6 plus million. Now, Woods has not that much time left. He's 34 years old. It's impressive he's as good as he is at that age. And he can help you a little bit, as he did for Seattle in his most previous stint with the organization. But there is a situation that could emerge at defensive tackle. Now, I like Puna Ford quite a bit. I think Brian Monet can be a nice number two run stopper. I think Monet could play the Al Woods role if you needed him to. There's also the potential of the emergence of Geno Atkins. What if he signs with the team? At that point, Ford, Collier, Woods, Monet maybe, R Rasheem Green, if one of the other guys impressed too, maybe he was a practice squad guy. I have no idea if Nikam Dichie's going to do anything ever again in the NFL, but I'll keep mentioning him. Woods is the safer pick to make the roster, but I don't think he's quite a lock yet with the way his contract is set up. That's why I put him on this list. Now, if you're a gambling man, can make some money betting on the Seahawks this year. Head over to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. When you use promo code Seahawks125, that will get you a 125% deposit bonus at chatsports.com slash bet. One of the multitude of bets you could place? How about some NFC West odds? Seattle is third still, folks, plus 250. Niners haven't quite picked their quarterback and it's a rookie in Jimmy G. I think the Rams are very much overhyped. Seattle at plus 250, not that bad of value. You can bet on maybe this is the year Russell Wilson wins NFL MVP. You can bet on the preseason, every single game, prop bets throughout. They will have plenty of fun bets for you to place this year. So go get that extra 125 bucks when you put down 100 by using promo code Seahawks125, as you see at the bottom of your screen, at chatsports.com slash bet offensive line time now lots of routes I think you could have gone here and at some level there has to be a cut but I think one of them will end up being a bit of a surprise if that kind of contradictory statement makes some sense Seattle has some depth on the offensive line now Jones has missed time in the preseason due to injury but it's very rare for a team to potentially cut a player with starting experience on the offensive line, given how bad O-line play generally is in the NFL. But again, numbers game going on here. Dwayne Brown, Damian Lewis, Ethan Posick, because of his contract, he's been banged up too. Gabe Jackson, Brandon Schell, and I think I'd throw in Cedric Abwehi. Maybe they stun me and the real surprise ends up being Schell or Abwehi. I think those guys are roster locks. I want to make Stone Forsyth on this team. That's a lot of guys, and you've got several players. And I'll also make note, Jake Curran's been a nice, a nice little surprise there. Between Kyle Fuller, Phil Haynes, Jordan Simmons, and, and Jamarco Jones, I don't see all those guys making the team. 
And if Stone Forsyth is ready to go as OT4 and Seattle trusts Sheldon Abwehi to play swing or and or right tackle, that's four tackles. That might make Jones the odd man out, who wasn't terrible last year. I thought, I, I thought he was better in 2020 than he was in 2019. Not that many sap, snack, or snaps, excuse me, so the one sack and seven hurries is a bit of an issue. But if Stone Forsyth makes this team like I think he will, I guess you could throw maybe him in as a surprise cut candidate in that case. I mentioned five starters and two backups. That's already seven offensive linemen. I doubt Seattle ends up carrying 11. So you've got to cut one of these guys then. Is it Jamarco Jones? Is it Jordan Simmons? Phil Haynes, who has maybe shown some promise. Kyle Fuller has been getting starting reps at center. Does he make the team? Do you carry three backup offensive linemen? So one of these guys, I guess, ends up getting cut. I like all four of them, which would make one of them a surprise candidate. But make your, make your guesses for me. Who ends up getting cut? Finally, my man, Nick Ballore. Allow me to explain. Um, the way this works out for Seattle and, and for Nick Ballore, they've done it in the past, although Ballore is on a two-year deal this year. Seattle could make one of their classic moves. Simply cut Nick Ballore and then bring him back after roster cuts. As a vested veteran, Ballore is not subject to waivers. So if you want to carry someone through the uh, roster cuts and then put them on IR for a little bit, maybe Colby Parkinson, you could cut Nick Ballore, save $1.10 million, and then bring him back at a very similar contract and still pay him the same amount of money. They've done that in the past. They've done it with Geno Smith as well. You could throw him in as a surprise cut candidate if you want to. But they're not really a cut candidate because they'd end up being back. But that type of roster manipulation is stuff you'll see with roster cuts due on Tuesday.